Frontier Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Aaron Landry is going to go all the way to the house. Landry gets the outside again. Lovely on the carry. Not He breaks through and he's into the end zone. He is dropped in the backfield by Kiernan Freeman. First handoff. Nice little bit of razzle dazzle there as the handoff went to Worley, then it went to Landry, and Landry's off to the races. Touchdown! No Walter just plowed through three or four tacklers. Frontier Red Hawk football. Frontier Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Tonight's game, the East Hampton Eagles and the Frontier Red Hawks from Whitebrook Middle School in East Hampton. And gentlemen, We're gonna pause for our national anthem and then set this one up. It's gonna be a good one between the Frontier Red Hawks and the East Hampton Eagles. Number two on the season for the Frontier Red Hawks as they got off strong on week one with a big win over Drury at South Deerfield. East Hampton is hosting its second straight game under the lights at White Park Middle School. This is the first year East Hampton has lights. Frontier won last year's meeting 18 to 14. They have a two year winning streak against the Eagles. Frontier holds the four and two record all time in battles between these two clubs. Joining me at the microphone for the first time ever, Emilio Tadonna. Emilio, this is going to be a good matchup between two very good teams that like to run the football. Uh, so, they both have a very strong running game, including the, uh, they, the Red Hawks only ran the ball, passed the ball, twice throughout all of the last game. Absolutely, and they, they have a strong running attack which we're gonna hear a lot about tonight. Kick is off, East Hampton takes the ball at their own 16 yard line, and they run it up the seam, and their runner is brought down at about the 40 yard line, decent field position to start off for the East Hampton Eagles, led by their quarterback, a guy named Max Weir, and uh, that's a return of about 27 yards, putting them in good field position, first and 10 at their own, right at their own 40 yard line. Weir sets up at an I formation with wide outs on either side. Now one man goes in motion, handoff goes inside and he picks up about two yards. We'll see who carried that ball. Ball carried by Tyler Perone. That's Perone. You're going to hear that name a lot, too, as he has been a big part of this offense for a long time. 
Brings up second and 10. Quick pass out to the wide is good. Completed to number 10, that's Helms. And that's a pickup of a couple of yards. It brings up third and about four. And the pass outside is complete and sliding down as East Tampa is going to a no huddle offense. Pass complete for Max Weir. And that's going to be good for a first down. So moving the ball very, very well are the East Hampton Eagles. And again, that formation is really, really fast. And an option pitch goes to number 11. That is Cam Kelly. And he is brought down. Uh, after a gain of about one. Second and nine. Second and nine. Hell should hold him off. And a quick inside handoff goes again to Kelly. And he moves it down to about the 44 of Frontier. For the second, and the third and six at the 44 of Frontier. And a quick timeout as there was some confusion. So East Hampton running that no-hattle offense very, very effectively. Yeah, well, that's more of a routine breaker. They're usually running the ball, but here they go, starting off the game with a bunch of quick passes. Yeah. Quick passes, and, and again, it's just, it's very, very quick. I, I don't think, certainly Frontier has not seen a no huddle offense like this yet this season. Second and six from the 44, and a flag down. This is going to be a delay of game on East Hampton. As you can hear, a very windy night here in East Hampton at Whitebrook Middle School. This is going to bring up third and 11 from about the 49 of third Frontier. We're mm -hmm. again in the I formation. Drops back to pass. Fires down the left sideline, and the pass is caught. What a catch by David Helms. And that's good for a first down, and they are inside, deep inside the Red Hawk territory. Really nice throw and catch there. At about the 15-yard line, it looks like. Inside give goes to Tassenfreud, it looks like. Frontier's run defense is just stopping them, and they're really only getting anything going through the air. The ground game is completely Paul dead. By Nick yep, that's a gain of one by Tassenfreud, brings up second and game nine. On the play. Second down. So they are inside of the Frontier red zone with about 7.20 to go in the quarter. Inside give goes to Perone, and he is knocked down after a gain of a couple of yards, so that did not fool the Frontier Redhawks. Number two, Tyler Perone. Let's see where they spotted. He might have gotten nothing. Right. No gain on the play. No gain. So third and nine from the 14. So Frontier seems to have settled in a bit after getting cut off guard by that no-huddle offense, and I'll tell you, that no-huddle offense at this level, not a lot of high school programs employ that, but the attempt is right effectively here in this first series. Now we are in the shotgun. The motion goes Perone. We are rolling out right. Fires it downfield. And it is incomplete as nearly intercepted. And that's going to bring up a fourth and nine. Intended for Camden Kelly. So good pursuit there. Emilio by the uh, Frontier secondary. Yeah, you know, he he rolled out. Uh, they got they did not get fooled by it, and he just you know tossed it down there, and they looked, read it well. They did read it well, and it didn't look like there was the any, any receivers around the area either. No, they were about five yards back, the nearest one. 
They're going to go for it on fourth down inside the 20. And Weir fires at the end zone, incomplete, and it will turn it over on down. So a tough break there. They had a, 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 a receiver there, but just couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, so almost a catch, but if I could tell right, I think he knocked it out of his hands just before he could hang on for enough time. I think you're right. So Frontier will take over on downs at their own. First down. Is that ball at the 20? It looks like it's at the, should get the 14, but it's about the 20. Okay, so the Frontier will take it over on their own 20 yard line. That's right, because of the penalty. First and 10 Frontier. An inside handoff. And chewing up all kinds of yardage. I think that might be Landry. Let's see, it's tough to read these numbers from here. It's either Landry or Worthley. Nice way to start on about a 12 yard gain. You know, if you just start the game running, it's going to work all day. Absolutely. That brings up a first, should be a first down. They haven't set the chain quite yet. First and 10 Frontier. And the inside give straight up the middle. That might be worldly with that run. Even with the yep, it was Wordley, and that's good for nine. So, just like they saw Second down. in the opening game, they're chewing up all kinds of yardage now. Inside give, I think goes to Gawanter. Aaron Landry with the carry. Right, that was Landry. No gain on the play. Didn't go far with that, so actually he actually might have lost a couple. Oh, yeah, the offense isn't going to win everything, and the defense won that one. Third and five from the, about the 37 yard line of Frontier. 5.25 to go. Again, same setup. Inside give, straight up Broadway, and they probably got a couple of yards here. I'm not sure, we'll see where they spot it. Looks like they're gonna spot it around the 39. That's gonna be good for only a couple, so it's gonna bring up about fourth and three. So I think he got a punt here. Anyway. Call by Corbin Blake. Yep. If they go for it, it'll be a risk, but it could Double pay off the considering that they could take the lead, not Corbin having the ball, and receive it halftime. Ball spotted just inside the 40-yard line, fourth and a long three, I think. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Well, this shows quite a bit if they do go for it here. It shows a lot of confidence in your run. Time, offense, out, on the field, time out on the field for Frontier. I want to mention our camera people tonight. Zach Peck and Alec Eckholt. Pelk, rather. Zach Pelk and Alec Eckholt. Our running cameras tonight here in Mountain Handwriting. From Whitebrook Middle School, yeah, the East Hampton Eagles and the Frontier Red Hawks. 4.38 to go in the first quarter. Also joining me in the booth, Emilio Dodonna. Making his debut as a color commentator on high school football. will be with you throughout the season, uh, providing commentary. And also our friend from Bear Country 95.3 will also be doing the honors for us at uh, a couple of these uh, games. So full house backfield, and they're going to go for it on fourth and two. And they're going to roll out right. It's going to be an option, and the, and the gamble works. And Freeman is off to the races down the right. Actually, that's... Uh, that's Landry. So they ran Landry out of sort of a, a modified Aaron Landry with the carry. Uh, Wildcat. And boy, he got a big gainer, and that's deep into East Hampton territory. A risky Rock decision, but East paid Hampton, off that 10, time. Might not be able to do it every time, but that time it worked. That's good for on the East 41 yards. For frontier first down. And it's a first down deep in East Hampton territory. So a fourth and two. What a call by Don Gordon. Now the handoff goes inside and can get about five or six yards on that one. Ball carried by Entering Stephen the red Wordley. zone here. And that's Stephen Wordley again. So that's that three-headed monster of Wordley, Gwanter, although Gwanter has not a touch yet, but also add into that mix Corbin Blight who's had a, a carry. That's a gain of six. Second and four. Second and four from the 14 of East Hampton. The Red Hawks are knocking on the door. 
Inside give. And that's going to be first down yardage. Let's see where they spot it. No, they didn't, they, they didn't, they didn't give the first, I don't think. Maybe they did. They may have to measure this. By Wordley. It was Wordley on the run. Just shy of oh, the first gonna, down. So he got to about, he got about three yards on that one. So it's going to be third and one from the 11 of East Hampton. About a third and one. Klaus backfield again. Inside give. They've got the first down and more, and they're going to be inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal. Well, all they're doing here is running it. Any pass here will definitely, probably Wesley. fool the Eagles. And, but, you know, it'll, they'll probably keep running it. And if you keep running, it's going to work. Absolutely. That's good for five. Ball is spotted first, first and goal, goal at the six. 2.33 to go in the first quarter. And the handoff goes to the big fullback up the middle. He keeps pushing, keeps pushing. He is close, but not in. That's power football. Just keep pounding it right up the middle, over and over Except again. Gawanter with the carry up the middle. That was Gawanter's first touch of the game. The ball is inside the five at about the four, so that was good Second for two. Down. Second and goal from the four of East Hampton. High formation again, inside give to Gawanter. He gets wrapped up and knocked down. He might have lost a yard on that one. Gawanter with the carry. Loss of about a yard on the play. Third and goal. So that's third and goal from about the five. In short yardage situations, Emilio, Gawanter is the guy you want to get the ball in his hands. He's, he's an absolute stud uh, up the middle. Yep. If you, the big, the big guy's going to be keep rolling in and Farther and that, than he gets. And that was just a counter to the left side and a touchdown That's for Frontier. Frontier is on the board first with a five yard touchdown run. Ball carried in by Aaron Landry. Landry, five yard touchdown run makes it six nothing. Frontier with 126 to go in period number one. Well, nothing, like you said, nothing fancy about that. That's just straight up smash mouth football. Yep, here they go again. Pitch goes left side, and he's going to get the corner, and he's in for the two point conversion. And the two point conversion is good. And we'll bring it back up the field. Ball carried in by Aaron Landry. With 126 to go in quarter number one. With 126 left to the first quarter. It is quarter. Frontier 8, Red East Hampton eight. nothing. Eagles. It's high school football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins, Emilio Dodonna here at uh, White Park Middle School. Our camera people are Zach Pelk and Alec Eckel. Kevin Murphy is here. Game two of the season for the Frontier Red Hawks. And they are out strong with a powerful drive. That brings the score 8-0. Landry with the run. Landry with the point after touchdown. And they'll kick off now to the Eagles. Ball's picked up at about the 18-yard line by Helms. He runs it back into Frontier territory, up to about midfield. I'm going to say probably about the 47-yard line of Frontier. And that's good for about a 37-yard return. Yep. He bobbled it, picked it up, kept running, just sprint straight down the middle, went to a little pile and broke out. They're going to spot that ball actually right at midfield, the exact midfield stripe. And first and 10 is, we'll see if Weir goes back to that no huddle offense that kind of confounded Frontier a little bit in the beginning. It's an eye formation. Weir in the shot. First down, first down, and Weir's going to keep it on the option. And he gets wrapped up, surrounded by white jerseys, but still picks up five yards or so to about the 45. Ball carried by the quarterback, Max Weir. So 
you know, the, looks like they're going to finally go back into a huddle if they didn't do the <laughs> entire first series, Emilio. Definitely crossed even the announcers up on that one. Second and five, again, same formation. Two split backs behind Weir in the shotgun. And Weir is going to once again take the option. The option pitch goes to Perone. And Perone is close to a first down inside the 40, it looks like. Yep, they're going to be running the option this drive, it looks like. It's two already. They'll run it until they can't stop it anymore. That's, that's usually Weird the rule. That should be a first down, I think. And the, once, they, once they stop the options, they'll just go back to the little underneath passes. Absolutely. You know, one thing that Frontier, Frontier Secondary didn't really get tested very much against Drury, but the times they did, they looked a little shaky. Yeah, they lit up a deep ball earlier today. This is going to be a counter run, left side. Perone again, it looks like, I'm sure that looks like actually uh, tossing from. And let's and that's see. the first quarter, folks. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. We have played one quarter from East Hampton High School. We'll change ends. The Frontier Red Hawks 8, East Hampton nothing. This is high school football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins and Emilio Dodonna. Here at East Hampton High School, actually, right for Middle School, excuse me. East Hampton High doesn't have a football field, but they play here the right, right, second time in a row. They played under the lights, and that was a great thing that the uh, people did here to get those lights in place. Ball's going to be spotted at about the 34-yard line. Thirty-four yard line, eleven minute quarters, and East Hampton starting to move the ball a little bit. East Hampton will start the second quarter on the that was a fast first yard quarter. Line. Second down. Only not even ten minutes. Weir takes the snap and the pitch to the right side. Going around the corner and stepping out of bounds, but definitely in first down territory was Cam Ball Kelly. By Cam and Kelly. Yep, there they go again with the outside runs. Well, that time they you know, they spread the, the offense way out. There was not much Frontier could do. Kelly Ball has a great speed a around the end. The 20 yard line. And that's going to be at a 22 yard line. That was good for a 12 yard game. East Hampton's moving the ball. Ball is actually spotted on the 22. 10.54 to go in the half. Very first, fast first. Weir's got a couple of receivers out there. And a whistle, and that's going to be, I believe, a yep, illegal procedure. That's going to be on Eagles, so that'll push him back five yards. It'll bring up first and 15 from the... 17 yard line. Excuse me, from the 17 yard from the 27 yard line. First and 15 Eagles. High formation again. Double wing offense. We are now going that nice inside draw handoff to toss and foul, but he doesn't go far, probably about three yards. So the oh, Frontier Red Hawks linebacker stayed at home and stopped that from being a bigger game than it was. Could have broke out there. The linebacker was the only one there, on the but play. he wrapped them up and brought them down. It's only a gain of one. That'll bring up second and 14 from the 26. Of Frontier. <laughs> and motion. And Weir is going to hand it off inside. And actually, it gets the corner and gets knocked out of bounds. We'll see where the runner was. That was a nice bit of misdirection. And Kelly. And that's going to be a first down. Ball is 
spotted just outside the 10 and about the ball spotted on about the nine yard line. That's, that's first, first and goal. goal, yeah. First and goal at the nine. Here, the pitch. Running right side is Perone, cuts back across, and he is not in the Tyler end zone. Perone with the carry, close. cuts it back inside. They're going back again, just running it Ball's and not stopping. That's what so they were doing Second last they, Last drive, they were running the quick passes, but this time, changing it up. Yep, that was good for eight yards. So, pretty surgical drive here, with the exception of the penalty for the East Hampton Eagles. Weird. Again, the option pitch goes to Cam Kelly, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Second he pitched it out there. There's one one man there. Kelly with the carry on the left side. Duked him out easily and dove in for the touchdown. Tell you, that was a, a really well run option. They've run it a couple of times tonight. Very effective. And that time Cam Kelly just got the pitch and just took it around the end. There was no way to stop him. So just like that, East Hampton is on the board with their first touchdown. On the first drive, they were doing the quick passes. Now the options, let's see what they do next drive. Yeah, I mean, certainly they've, they've got a varied offense. And, and Matt Bean, who's the new coach, he likes to, to mix it up offensively. And certainly evidence of that in this first half time. It's not what Frontier is used to. That's correct. And in motion goes Kelly again, inside handoff goes to Tassenfrode. Actually, no, they they actually pitched it left. And the two point Again, a great bit of misdirection. Went to Kelly, and Kelly with the two-point conversion run makes Kelly it 8-8. Eight, eight. Eight. Bring it back up to the second quarter. With the score, East Hampton 8, Frontier 8. This is high school football on Frontier Community Access Television. Well, that is exactly not what Frontier wanted to see. I mean, and it looked like Emilio that they really moved that ball. The Eagles did pretty much at will in that drive. Yeah, Frontier couldn't stop them. They, dry, they mixed it up a bit on defense, but still couldn't stop that option. Always pursuing the wrong player. Well, I, like you said, it's not it's not an offensive set that Frontier is used to. I don't see a lot of that in the Intercounty League. And um, I, every time East Hampton plays, is there in the Intercounty League now? The teams are going to have to contend with them. Uh, they kick it off, and Frontier will take it at about the nine-yard line. And Landry brings it up across the 30, which is where they will start things off. Unusual kickoff formation there with everybody crowded around the kicker. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I agree. Um, you don't see that very often. Usually they spread it up Noah Batchelder. Ball's going to be spotted at about the 28-yard line. Quick timeout on the field. Spotted at about the 28 yard line. Number of other games in high school football going on tonight on around the valley. And the big one that people are talking about is in, East, in uh, Turner's Falls where Amherst is taking on the Turner's Falls Indians. Earl McGraw, who was a former Turner's Falls High School uh, teacher and administrator, passed away recently to have a moment of silence in his memory. Belcher Towns at Greenfield tonight, Monument Mountains at Athol. And Mahar is at Ludlow. Uh, good early season matchups there. And of course, next week, the Red Hawks have Booster Day. And they'll be at home against Greenfield. Two o'clock kickoff next Saturday in South Deerfield. One thing I noticed, uh, Emilio, as I was going through the East Hampton program, that they have they have so many different levels of football. Talk about our feeder system. And they've got Pee Wees, they've got you know, Pop Warner, they have a strong middle school program. I mean, they really, the, the football roots run deep here in East Hampton, as they do in South Deerfield Frontier, but certainly a very impressive group of young people. Yep, someday some of those Pee Wees will be at this level and doing what they're doing right here. Now Frontier with an inside handoff and breaking it to the outside is Landry. He's got some more room. Is it Landry or Wordley? That was a great cutback. He ran it straight up the middle. Did a nice little move outside. Did a nice little move to the left and broke it outside for a big game. Yeah, Landry has been breaking big, big runs. That's the second time in this game he's 
taking it deep into East Hampton territory where they're going to set up in good shape. It's good, good for 37 yards on that run. Great play to start a drive there. Absolutely. And this is the kind of momentum you want. And this is what, I mean, Frontier's going to live and die by the running game right now they're living and living large. Inside handoff. And the, the good thing about this Frontier offense is you, you don't really know, you know, from one moment to the next who's going to carry it. Any one of the four guys could be running it. They're all strong at running it, too. Yeah. Steve Wordley with the carry. That was Wordley that time. It's good for two. Second and eight from the 32 of East Hampton. Second down. Clock is in motion, 747 to go in the half. All tied up at eight here at Whitebrook Middle School. Inside give goes to Gawantry. Almost broke it. He's got first down yards for sure. But again, Seth Gawantry. Getting those yards the hard way. Got the power back straight up the middle. Breaks one tackle and goes for a bit. Good for 12 yards. First and 10 from the 20 of East Hampton. First down. As the Hawks are in business again on the ground. A little cross buck. And that time, East Hampton sniffed that out. A little misdirection there for a counter run. And Landry got dropped. Aaron Landry. No gain on the play. A rare no gain on the play. No gain on the play. Second down. Double wing set in motion. Goes Worley, he gets it. Right side. Gets the corner. Got first down yardage. And I think he stayed in bounds. But it's going to set up first and goal inside the five. A nice run. The thing about the Red Hawks run game is that they can run it straight up the middle or way outside. And it's both effective. Very true. And that ball looks like it's spotted right at the five. So that's good for a 15 yard carry for Steve Worley on that. Student body right sweet. Looks like the ball's around the four yard line. First and goal. Yeah, I'm gonna say the four as well. It's just inside. That's a good for a 16 yard run. Inside give. And they power it all the way down to the end. Very, very close. But they're not gonna get in the end zone that time. Gawanter with a power run up the middle. Didn't look like they got anywhere though, really. Second down. The second and goal, so no gain on the play. They might have even lost a yard there. Looks like the ball is spotted right at the five. Quarterback Miles Freeman brings in the play from Coach Warden. High formation. And this time Freeman's going to roll out left. He's going to stop, cut back through, and he's going to be into the end zone. Beautiful misdirection there by Miles Freeman. And that is good for six points. That was a great little stutter step with Hotwell rolling out. Stop yourself quickly, cut it right back in, and got an easy touchdown. I mean, everybody in the building is thinking, oh, it's going to go to one of the big backs, and, <laughs> and there you go. And Miles Freeman with that great athleticism gets the outside run, five yards, and it's 14 to eight. Two point conversion, Freeman on the rollout pass. And the pass is complete. Wow, what a catch. Ball over the defender's head. He tipped it up and caught it and got his feet down. So we'll come back up the field with 5.36 to go in the half. It is Frontier Redhawks 16 and the East.
Texas Tech and Eagles 8. This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins and Emilio Dodonna here at White Park Middle School where the Frontier Red Hawks have taken a 16-8 lead courtesy of the five-yard touchdown run by Miles Freeman. 5.36 to go in the half and the Red Hawks will kick off. Ball is taken at about the 25-yard line. And back up the middle, they get a seam. Uh-oh. And looks like Cam Kelly is gone. Down the left sideline. Touchdown. That's good for a 75 yards and six points for East Hampton. Oh, wow, that's all I have to say there. Short kick, picks it up, runs straight through the hole. Good blocking, and all the way he goes. And Kelly, 75-yard to touchdown to run. Just like that, it is 16 to 14. Thank you. So he's tempted to go for the two-point conversion. Looked like they had Kelly hemmed up, and then he just got, you know, by one blocker, got a nice block, and got his leg all the way up the left sideline. Blocking was excellent on that play. Two-point conversion attempt. Upcoming for East Tampa. This will tie the game if they get it. Weir. Going to keep it himself up the middle. Gets popped. Stays on his feet. Did he get in? He did. And the two-point conversion is good. So Weir with the run makes it 16 to 16. Nice hit, but barely gets in for the two-point conversion. Five, Come back up the field, 523 to go in the half. All tied up at 16. This is Frontier Red Hawk football. Frontier Community Access Television. Well, Frontier Red Hawks try and have an answer here after yielding a 75 yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Camden Kelly. Back deep, Wordley and Landry for the Hawks. Ball is going to come down at about the 25. Run back up the right side, and they'll start off right about the 35, maybe the 34 yard line. Actually, they're going to spot yep, at the 33. So that's good for about a nine yard return. Kieran Freeman with the kick return. Ball is going to be spotted at the 34 yard line of Frontier, which is Ball's where they will start. 518 to go in the half. First down, Frontier. 16 16. We know this is going to be a, a tight one, and Frontier is definitely in a big, at a tougher ball game than they were on opening night. Reverse handoff, counter the other way to Landry, it looks like. And he gets swarmed down close to the 40 yard line. Kept his feet moving and gained a couple extra yards there, too. Yep. Tough runner. Oh, carried by Landry. And now we'll spot the Brought ball about the 40 yard line. Good for a gain of six. Second and four. Gain of about six on four. the play. Second down. Clock is in motion. Each team has a couple of timeouts left. They got time, but if their clock management is good, they can leave. East Hampton with not a lot of time left to do anything after. Landry's got first down yardage and more. He's brought down inside, actually close to the 50 yard line, maybe about a yard shot. That's good for a first down. Ball carried by Aaron Landry. They spotted at about the 48, so. Gets the ball to about the 48 yard line. Good for a gain of eight. And that's a first down for Frontier is chewing up time off the clock and chewing up yardage with that full house backfield. Inside give again, good for a good six, seven, eight yards right up the middle. They're running up there over and over again, just pounding it on East Hampton. Well, you know, you gotta stop it, that's the thing. Stop the Yeah, that's, that's the big man, go Wanter with that run. It's good for about eight yards again, right up the gut. Second and two from the 44 of East Hampton. It's looking like they're running out the clock, and then if they can get not enough time left for East Hampton, they'll receive the ball at halftime and could take a two possession lead. Yeah, that's, I think, what Coach Gordon wants to see happen. 
And the handoff goes to Landry again. He gets dropped down. I think maybe not a lost yard on that one. Yeah, yeah, lost about one. Brought down by that brings David up Collins. third and a long three. On the play. Forty-five down. of East Tampa. Three minutes and change to go in the half. Freeman rolling out. He's going to try and throw. Quick screen pass is complete. Nice, great Tackle catch complete. there. He dove out for it, hung on to it, almost batted away by the defender, but he just barely missed it. Ball caught by tight end Joe Morosky. And that was Morosky again. That's good for a first down. First down, Red Hawk. Ball is spotted there. It's tough for off the, uh, the 50. Run goes to Landry. Landry down the left sideline, and he is going to go in for the touchdown. That is just a nice piece of running by Landry. Landry's playing very well this game. That's his third breakout run of the game. I think that was his third over 30 yards. That time, um, maybe a blast, cut it outside, and it's gone. That's good for a 28-yard touchdown run. It's 22-16, just like that. And they're going to run it left side. And Freeman's going to turn and throw it. The pass is going to be incomplete. Good job by Freeman there, avoiding the pressure, firing in there, but the defender batted it away. So we'll come back up the field with 2.31 to go in the half. Frontier 22 and East Hampton 16. This is high school football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins and Emilio Dodonna here at White Brook Middle School where lots of scoring in this first half. 22-16, we still have a 2.31 to play in the second quarter as the Red Hawks will kick off. It's a, a bit of a worm burner. It's picked up at the 24. And once again, that's Kelly, I believe. No, I'm sorry, that's not Cam Kelly, that is Number 10, David Helms, runs it back up past the 45-yard line. Good field position for the East Hampton Eagles. Driven out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. First down, Eagles. I'm going to spot the ball at the 49. And a timeout on the field, so East Hampton will talk about it. So to recap the scoring as we get ready to go into the half, Landry kicked it off for Frontier with a five-yard run. Finished it out with a two-point conversion run in the first quarter to make it 8-0. In the second quarter, Kelly with a one-yard run for East Hampton. Finished it off with a two-point conversion to make it 8-8. And Miles Freeman with a five-yard touchdown run and a pass to Joe Morosky. Made it 68. The very next play, Kelly with a 75-yard kickoff return, and a Max Weir run made it 16-16. And Aaron Landry with a 28-yard run, incomplete pass for the two-point conversion, made the score 22-16, which is where we stand right now. So East Hampton, Amelia would love to punch one in here and get the, either take the lead or at the very least send this into a, a tie at halftime. Yep, and if they do, they know that Frontier gets the ball back, but they they're. They're not that confident, confident in their defense right now, probably. But I think if they can get one stop, they'll have some confidence enough to do something after halftime. Both these teams have very effective running games for East Hampton. The option has, been, has worked the best for them tonight. We are under center, and he's going to roll out left and fire it downfield, going for it deep. And we got pass interference, I think. I think maybe a Frontier player got a hand on the intended receiver, which was Helms. There is a flag on the play. He almost caught it, too, even with the pass interference. He did. But let's see where they spot this ball. The line judge is still back at the original line of scrimmage, so I'm not sure if this is on the offense or the defense.
And they be saying that Helms might have pushed off. I don't know. Maybe an offensive well, pass interference. That's definitely pass interference. And it's definitely on Frontier. So it's going to be a 15 yards and a new first down. And they're going to spot the ball at the 36-yard line. And that is a costly penalty. He skipped him. We'll get the ball at the 36-yard line. First 10 for the 36-yard line of Frontier. We are under center. Fakes the hand up to Perone. Screen pass in the flat, incomplete. Pass is intended for Tossenford. Pass is incomplete. And that'll and bring up second and 10 from the 36 of Frontier. It was, it was incomplete, but he still hit him, and no flag there for a late hit. Yeah, not a bad little little setup, that little screen pass. I mean, you don't know if it's going to be a handoff and they throw that flare out in the flat, and if the guy isn't covered properly, that can be uh, six points in a hurry. It was too high for the defender to catch, but yeah. also for the receiver. Absolutely. Second and 10, 2.11 to go. And handoff goes to number 11. That's Kelly again, and he has got a first down. That kid is so quick down. around the end. Actually, they gave, they gave him nine on that one, so it's going to be second nine, and right? one. And that ball is going to be at the 27-yard line of the Red Hawks. Looks like East Hampton is doing what exact, exactly what Frontier wanted to do. Yep. That's going to be, there's that option again. Weir keeps it. That time, though, he gets swarmed. He gets the first down and pays for it just outside the 20. Max Weir with the keeper option. Ball is spotted at about the 23, so that was good for a gain of four. And with 129, they're gonna stop the clock, and I think we may have a timeout. Yep, timeout East Hampton. It's a third. So if you're frontier here, Amelia, what do you what do you try and do defensively? I mean, at this point, it looks like that option's pretty deadly, but they've got three or four plays that have been effective. Well, you gotta contain the outside, but make sure those linebackers Stay over the middle, and if they run some out routes and go up, then, well, you just got to hope. Yeah, the backer's got to stay at home. You never know what this guy Weir's going to do. Oh. And the shotgun again, and he's going to throw. Timing pattern on the left sideline, complete! Inside the five, what a catch. No, there's a, it's a touchdown. It was, I thought he was at the five, but it was actually in the end zone. What a catch by East Hampton. A deep fade, turns around, dives out for it, and once he dove out for it, when he caught it, he rolled into the end zone. And that was Helms with the touchdown catch. Good for 23 yards. Great catch, spinning around at the last second and diving out for it. And that ties the game at 22 all with the extra point that could put East Hampton in the lead and likely give them the lead going into the break. They're gonna set up for a kick. Yeah, but... Now that there's still a minute 16 left, if Frontier can get anything. The kick is gonna be short and ends up in the end zone and incomplete. So and the, the extra, extra point, point fails. We'll bring it back up the field. With 116 to go in the half. We're all tied at 22 on the scoreboard. This is Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins, Emilio Dodonna. Zach Pelk and Alec Echol. I'm with Kevin Murphy here at Whitebrook Middle School. What a game. After a first quarter that had a only one touchdown, we have had a flurry of scoring, and now we are all tied up. East Hampton and Frontier, courtesy of the 23-yard touchdown pass to Camden Kelly from Max Weir. And the Frontier Red Hawks will have one more chance, it looks like, to Try and get that lead back in this half. A nice kick. Ball taken at about the 17 yard line. And he runs it up the gut. Goes left side and is brought down just outside the 40 yard line at about the 42. Well, here Frontier goes with a minute and nine seconds left. If they can get in the end zone here, though, uh, East Hampton won't have any time and Frontier will go into halftime leading, plus receiving coming out. Good point. 
four, at the, it's about the bottom, about the 41 yard line of Frontier. Frontier, yard line. Frontier wants to talk First about time. it. And we'll see and we what uh, Coach Gordon comes up with. We said about a minute nine to go. At They've got time, we'd like to invite you to two timeouts. So come early before the halftime crowd rushes in. I think at this point, we've got to get the ball to Landry. Then he's the one that's breaking it for a long yardage popcorn tonight. Popcorn and candy. Yep. Oops, they give it to Landry a couple Stop times. Hopefully he can break one out. And maybe they can go through the air to finish it off. All right. So Kelly's having quite a night. He has scored all three of East Hampton's touchdowns. A one-yard run, a 75-yard kickoff return, and a 23-yard pass. So he is having himself. Gee, that was David Helms with the pass. So Kelly and Helms are having themselves quite a day for East Hampton. It was Helms. So Kelly and Helms have been the scorers for East Hampton. Freeman's going to roll it out. Fires it down the field. And no interference call. The intended receiver was Cole Price. Got spun around. Looked like there was some contact, but no call. I don't know. That was questionable, but could have been uncatchable there. That probably is why there wasn't an interference call. Second and 10. 41 of Frontier. <laughs> Ball spotted at the 41. Minute three. To go in the half. Moshe goes wordly. Freeman passes again, incomplete. Too high over the middle. I'll bring up passes incomplete. third and ten in the 41. So interesting. I figure, I mean, I'm not sure what the thinking here is. The running game's been working, but then again, when you pass the ball, there are, there are fewer seconds ticked off the clock. Maybe that's the thought. But. Yep, the less clock is milked, the more uh, the less time that each champion will have the ball. That's a good point, too, and what uh, Don Gordon is thinking. Split backs, and Freeman rolling out again. Over the middle pass, in through the hands of the receiver, incomplete. incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. If he caught that, he probably could have gotten the first down and out of bounds to stop the clock with around 50, 53 seconds left. So that's gonna bring up fourth and 10. And barring something, a completion here, this could be the last play Frontier has in this half. They're gonna punt it. High over the end over end kick. And it's gonna stop and roll dead at about the 26 yard line. So that is where East Hampton will take over with about 46 seconds, 44, 5.9 to be exact. Ball's gonna be spotted at about the 20. Seven. East Hampton will take over on their 26 yeah, yard Yeah, 26 line. yard line. First down. So this is a big stop here. So there's quite a bit of time on the clock. East Hampton has an opportunity here to take a lead, and that's something that Frontier does not want to see happen. Wouldn't be surprised to see Will airing out a couple of times here. Let's see what they got in stock, stock for us here. He's got trips to the right. We're in the shotgun. One man in motion. And the counter handoff does not go anywhere. His Frontier sniffed that out very, very well. Doing the opposite of what Fr Frontier wanted to do. They're running up the Ball middle and running out the clock. Or Frontier wanted to milk no clock and get in the end zone. Loss of two on the play. And Kelly loses two on that one. It brings up second and 12 from the 24 of East Hampton. We got the timeout on the field. And Frontier calls a quick timeout with 27.9 seconds left. Y-E-L-L! Y-E-L-L! Everybody out, come on! 
Frontier, just so you know, is 7-1 in its last eight games. The low loss came in last year's Western Mass Division III semifinals. A 28-6 loss to Hoosick Valley. And a lot of the same players who are part of that team are on the field right now, including Gawanter and Wordley and Landry, the three-headed monster in the backfield. Frontier, pretty good, pretty good run here for the last few games they've played. And against Drury, they were pretty much unstoppable. In this game, though, this is a little bit different. They've got, they've got themselves in a dogfight here. Plus, with these Hamptons scoring a couple times on that mix-up offense, quick passes, options and all. Yeah, the option has been very effective for East Hampton in this game, you're right. And, and I'm not sure why they haven't done more passing. We're going to probably see a couple of passes here, though. We are under center. Rolling out right. Passes across the other way. Pass complete. And I think that uh, Perona is kicking himself because he could have had a lot more yardage than he did, but he fell down. Tripped up. Uh, it's like they're just going to let the clock run out. Five seconds. Yep, you gained three on that one, and that's going to do it in the half. So we have played two quarters. Whitefort Middle School in East Hampton at the end of two quarters. We're right back where we started. Frontier 22, East Hampton 22. We'll have second half action coming up. This is high school football on Frontier Community Access Television. And welcome back to Whitebrook Middle School. Second half action upcoming. Frontier Red Hawks and the East Hampton Eagles tied at 22. And what's been a pretty good match of Chris Collins and Emilio Dodonna here. And let's recap the scoring in the first half. Frontier got on the board first with Landry with a five yard touchdown run. Finished it off with a point afterward to make it 8 nothing. And then Cam Kelly answered for East Hampton with a one-yard touchdown run. Finished off the point after run to make it 8-8. And then Freeman came back for Frontier with a five-yard touchdown run of the quarterback keep. And a Murawski point after pass made it 16-8. Then Kelly came back on the very next play. 75-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to make it 16-16. Landry, a 28-yard run to make it 22-16. The pass fell incomplete and then Helms, a 23-yard nifty pass from Weir. And the kick failed to make it 22-20. And that's where we're going to start the second half with Frontier Here's taking the ball out. After uh, the Eagles started off the game with the ball. So Frontier will get their first whack at it. Coming out with that nifty formation that Emilio likes so much. <laughs> the <laughs> kicking formation. Yeah, it's very unusual. It's very unusual. And they're going to do a try for an onside kick. Ball's knocked loose, and I think East Hampton's got it. Caught it. Got knocked out of his hands. And East Hampton recovers. Yep. East Hampton with the onside <laughs> kick recovery. Wow. Well, that's going to fire up the East Hampton Eagles. And that's going to bring up a first and ten at midfield. You couldn't execute it. An you know, outside kick much better than that. No, you couldn't. It was a nice kick. Bounced right up. Hit him in the hands. And the guy was charging at him by the time it hit him in the hands. You don't see a lot of onside kicks in their kind of league football. But that time it worked beautifully for East Hampton. And Weir, as they set up, he's in the shotgun. First and ten from the 50. Clock is in motion. And the inside give goes to Perone. Gets a huge hole up the middle. First down yard. Still on his feet into frontier territory. And that was very, very well executed. A first down for East Hampton inside at about the 31-yard line. It's good for 19. Excellent blocking there. Opened up a big hole. Once again, back to the no huddle offense. Weir rolls out. Fires over the middle. Pass incomplete. Intended for Helms. <laughs> That brings up second down. Oh, a bit, just a bit too high. So the Red Hawks caught by surprise with that onside kick. Can they recover and hold off the Eagles? Keep them out of the end zone. Weir takes the snap from shotgun. 
Pumps once, tries to run it, gets hit, and it's intercepted. Well, they're going to say it was intercepted, so the Frontier player did not grab into it. That was a great play by the Frontier defense. Uh, tipping the ball, almost tipping the ball, forcing uh, the quarterback to roll out, tip, almost oh, tipping no. it, and then almost picking it off, reading it very well. He took a heck of a whack, too, did Weir, as it was a broken play. He, he certainly wanted to pass it, but decided to run and threw it the last second. I'm surprised that wasn't picked up, but it's a third down and 10 on the 31 of Frontier. Clock is in motion. We are under center. Now Perone goes in motion. Pitch goes to Perone right side. They stretch things out. And Perone is hauled down from behind. And I don't know if he got the first down or not, but he is pretty close, I think. I don't think so. I think they're going to go for it here. Probably another option or something like well, that. They only got, he only got six yards on that play. but So, yeah, I think in this, in this point, you know, you're down that far down. I think fourth and four, you're in two or four down territory here. I think you got to go for it. Yep, they've have a, had a strong running game up the middle, and yep, they're going for it. Ball spotted at the 25-yard line. Perone is back there again. We're in the gun. And inside, yeah, actually it's the option. Weir keeps it and gets knocked down. I think they're definitely going to turn this over. Frontier Redhawks, great defense, and they get the ball back. They finally read the option, cor uh, um, yeah, read the option correctly. Tackled him for a loss. So he got nowhere, and Frontier will take over on downs. That's a big break for Frontier and good defense. Ball will be spotted at about the 25-yard line again, which is where the play ended. And so the Red Hawks will take the ball back. Freeman under center. Backs in motion again. Inside give, up the middle, again, about six yards or so for Gawanter. Again, running it up the middle. That's oh. Frontier's game all day. Actually, sorry, they gave him the first down. He got more than six yards. All the way up to about the 36-yard line, so that's good for 11. Freeman, inside draw, handoff. And the back is still on his feet. It's tough to see who carried that ball. Looks like it was Landry. Yep, and that's good for a gain of about five yards. That brings up second five from the 30, I think that's the 41-yard line of Frontier. Frontier's offense has been a very slow offense all day. Well, that's it's a deliberate. It's a deliberate uh, ground offense for sure. That time they tried to sweep to the right side, and he, I think, has first down yardage. Nice spin move to avoid the ace Hampton defender. That was Landry again. Wordly on the carry. That's good for a first down, but you're absolutely right. It, it is a methodical offense, but it's also one that sneaks up on you. It sort of comes out of nowhere. And next thing you know, they're behind you by 10 yards. Just a five, five, and then a 30. Yep. Breaking out every once in a while. That's exactly right. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Landry in motion. He gets the give. Running around left side. East Hampton's end stay at home, and they wrap him up pretty good. And I think he got nowhere on that one, Emilio. Nope, there's no holes open there. Looked like he tried to push off of it, and nothing there. He got maybe one on that one. To my angle, it even looked like he knocked over his own offensive line. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> That's what it looked like from here, too. The ball spotted at midfield. The wind really kicking up here, so Frontier having a running game isn't the worst thing in the world right now. And Miles Freeman's going to throw. And the pass is complete. Aired it out. And he found... One of his favorite receivers downfield. Very nice lob pass. Right over, right over the linebackers and under the safety. Caught it on the post route and got out of bounds. That's Kieran Freeman. And that sets up a first down into East Hampton territory at about the 29-yard line. That's good for 21 yards for Kiernan. There they go. Switch, switching it up again. Going short. Just a bunch of little runs up the middle and then breaking one out far. 
of the pass that time. Freeman's not going to throw the ball a lot this year because they have such a strong running game, but when he does, he de definitely can, fly, can cork it out there. Yep, he has a great arm. And now the handoff goes to Landry again. Landry gets spun down after picking up maybe eight yards. And I'm gonna say they gave him, yeah, about eight yards. I'll bring up second and two from the 21 yard line. There go again, running it. Yep, 6.32 to go in the third quarter. We're all tied at 22, by the way. Here at Whitebrook Middle School. First time Frontiers played under the lights here in this program's history. And handoff goes inside again. That's going to be good for first down yardage. We'll see where they spot it. It's going to be at about the 17 yard line, I think. First down run. Yep, we'll see who they gave it to. I'm not sure who carried that ball. They faked, yep. it, they faked it outside, and that didn't fool anybody. And then they ran two up the middle. So, well, they, fake somebody. They're going to give it to Gawanter of that, and that's good for four yards and a first down for Frontier. <laughs> Methodical. Inside draw the other way. And blowing through the middle and close to the goal line. It's going to be first and goal. A nice run. Blocks were very good. And the hole was big. Hit it right through it and got down to the about the one yard the line. The one yard line is right. First and goal from the one that's good for 16 yards for Stephen Worthley. Frontier knocking on the door of, of the go ahead touchdown. Inside give to Gawanter, stays on his feet, sticks with it, and he gets into the end zone. Great power there. Stiff arming right through the East Hampton defender and powering into the end zone. Touchdown, Gawanter. One yard touchdown run makes it 28 to 22. You're right, Amelia. That was all about power, and that's what that kid's about. That's his game. He loves that smash mouth style. Stiff armed him right in the chest, knocked him straight over, and fell over for the touchdown. The two point conversion attempt upcoming. Gawanter with the one yard run. And the pitch is going to go to Landry, it looks like. And he is in for the two point conversion. Nice dive, diving between two offensive linemen, leaving out just to get the touchdown. Uh, two point conversion. So we'll bring it back up the field. 525 to go in the third quarter. And Frontier's back on top. It's the Red Hawks 30, East Hampton. 22. This is Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Nine plays, 75 yards, and eight points. That's what the Frontier Red Hawks did in that last series, Emilio. As you mentioned, just a surgical, surgical strike. Offense running most of the time, but a nice uh, pass to mix things up. Red Hawks looking good on offense right now. Look, they got Landry with a great, with great jukes and moves everywhere. Squib kick is not returned by East Hampton. They're going to spot it at about the 38-yard line, which is where... East Hampton will take over. Good news there is nobody ran it back for a touchdown. That was the thing you were worried about with the special teams last half. But that time didn't happen. That, was, that kick they used, the squib kick, especially to avoid that happening again. Exactly right. That's the smart thing to do against the team with this many explosive return people. So, Weir and the Eagles will take over at their own 38. Frontier's got to make a stop here. You don't want to be trading touchdowns with these guys. Motion. Inside give goes to, per to uh, Tossenfrau up the right sideline. And he's into Frontier territory. Well, he had a huge hole on that right end. He handed it off, pumped it. A lot of people got fooled by the pump. There was a huge gap there, and he just ran through it for a lot of yards. I think Frontier caught a break. I think he stepped out of bounds about 10 yards before they thought. So the ball is spotted at the 36 of Frontier. Lucky for them there. 
First down Eagles. Would have been another 10 yards. That's right. It's good for 26 yards anyway on the ground. We are under center again. Same formation. And he's going to snap back and throw on first down. Fires down the left sideline. Complete. What a catch. Oh, David Helms. That was a great throw. Firing it far down the field, diving out, and an incredible catch. Yeah, that Helms, I'll tell you, he's got great hands, but that was a well-thrown ball by Weir. And it is first and goal inside the five. That is a backbreaker right there. They've been having a great connection all day. That's probably around 60 yards, maybe 70 for them today. That was that, that's good for 32 on that pass play alone, so you're absolutely right on the count there. So East Hampton going to try to punch one in here. We are under center. Perone goes in motion. And the inside give is up the middle. And I don't think he got in. That's Towson found again, number three, up the gut. Nice tackle, wrapped up by 45. Got him down for no gain. Second and goal at about the three of Frontier. That's good for a two yard gain. Where has Towson Froud set back? He didn't like what he saw and he called timeout. I think Frontier had that one read. <laughs> I think he, Weir's not stupid. He knew he wasn't going to be able to do what he wanted to do there, and so he called the timeout and they're going to reset the play. So quite an interesting uh, turn of events here. Frontier is going to try and go line stand these guys, but they've got, you know, like, like Frontier, East Hampton's got a bunch of different weapons in that backfield. It's tough to know who the ball's going to be going to. Yep, they can either pound it up there or they can air it out. Any, the thing about East Hampton is that any, any kind of play they go to underneath a deep pass, speed run, and up the middle power run, they have it all. We're in the gun again. Perone is in motion. They go inside a thousand front. He's up the middle. He's in for the touchdown. Easy run, blocks were good, faked it outside, dove in, easy touchdown. Nick Tausenfraud finishes what he started with the big run, and that makes it 30-28. to 28. So this is one of those games where you're going to see, a, it's already high scoring, you're going to see it back and forth tussle all the way to the end, I think. We could see overtime before we're done. Two-point conversion attempt upcoming as East Hampton trying to tie it up here. But the key play was that big 32-yard touch, uh, with a pass to Helms. Linebackers loaded up for the for Frontier. We are rolling right, throws back across the other way, and the ball is tipped incomplete. So that could factor in big as Frontier stops the two-point conversion attempt and keeps the score. At 30 to 28 Frontier as we come back up the field, you're listening to and watching Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins and Emilio Dodonna here at uh, Whitebrook Middle School. Also running the cameras today is Zach Pelk and Alec Eckhold. Kevin Murphy is here as we are on the road for game two of the season for Frontier as they Hang on to the lead as they're able to deny the two-point conversion attempt. And they t keep a 30-28 to 28 lead, which could be significant as we head down the stretch here. Frontier getting ready to accept the kickoff. And it goes d back down to about the 10-yard line. Freeman takes it, runs it up the left side. Up the middle, Freeman gets a seam and good. Return all the way up to about the 44-yard line, which is where Frontier will take over. Explosive run back, solid block, solid blocks, and good game. It's good for a 34-yard return and sets the Red Hawks up at about the 34-yard line for their second series of this half. Four oh four to go in the third quarter, and again Frontier playing to a Slim, two-point lead, 30 to 28. Same backfield setup. 
and inside draw. It looked like there was a miscommunication. It wasn't a fumble, but it was definitely not, not a play that worked. No, East Hampton saw that coming from the start. Second they lined up there, saw it coming, read it, stopped it. It's a loss of two. Three on the play. Second down. Inside give. Goes, it looks like, to Worthley. And he picks up uh, about five yards. Brings up third and eight. The run game wasn't working like it was last drive. But slow runs can lead to a breakout eventually. Absolutely. Well, this is key. He said he can stop on a three and out here. And ball goes up the middle. They're not going to get the first down, though. They're up past into East Hampton territory. I don't know. Fourth down here. I would go for it, but see what, see what they say. Looks like they're bringing on the punting unit. Ball spotted at the 40s. Eight yard line of East Hampton. And they punt it away. And they will have to kick it. No, they fake it. It's a fake punt. Goes to Landry, and I don't think he got there. He shuffled it out on the lateral, and he didn't catch the lateral. Ball hit the ground. He picked it up. Nobody. They no right game and a turnover. That's, that could be big. As they tried the fake punt, and they just could not get around the end. So East Hampton is going to get the ball at the 49 of Frontier. Landry's lateral just wasn't far enough for whoever that was to catch it. And ball hit the ground, picked it up. Nowhere to go. Now Frontier is going to have to make a stop here. This is a big, big drive here. If East Hampton can punch it in here, and they, they really, that's the best they've done defending the Frontier run game in this game so far. Yeah, that was a great stop. Three and out. Now they're back on offense. Weird. There's the handoff. And getting away from the tackle is Kelly. As it looked like the Frontier player had his shirt, but he was able to extricate himself and gets up to about the 46. Slipped out of the tackle, ran for a couple extra yards. That's what you want to do every play. Ball spotted at the 48 of Frontier. Inside handoff goes to Perone, and Perone is off to the races, and he has a big first down run for East Hampton. East Hampton's have, been having great run blocks all day. Those inside zones are going straight up there, holes open, hit him every time. So the ball is spotted, it looks like, at about the 30 of Frontier, just outside the 30 of Frontier. It's good for 17 by Perone. Inside handoff goes for a couple of yards. Another fake. Nobody knows who it's going to. Everybody pursue somebody and hope they pursue the right man. That was Towson front that carried that time, and he got about a yard. Second and nine from the 30 of Frontier. 33 seconds to go in this quarter. Weir. Keeps it on the option. Option pitch. And they spread things out. This is first down yardage. Once again, it's Cam Kelly with the run. A great play. Another option. This time pitches it out. Slips off the tackle and goes for around 12. Yep, and that should be a first down. That may very well be the last play of this quarter as the clock is ticking down. Nope, they didn't get the first down. 
But we have played three quarters. We're going to switch ends at the end of three quarters. Frontier 30, East Hampton 28, and they're knocking on the door. This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Final frame up coming from Whiteport Middle School. This has been a great high school football game. And the Frontier Red Hawks are in a dog fight with the East Hampton Eagles. As we're getting ready to start the fourth quarter with a third and about three for East Hampton at the 24 of Frontier. Driving on the run this whole drive. Probably gonna keep driving on it. And um, Frontier has not been able to stop that run at all. All right, let's see what happens here. We are under center. The shotgun. Got one guy in motion. Tazenfrau gets the give, and that one got sniffed out nicely by the Frontier defense. Dropped him for a loss. That time they pursued the right man. Got the stop. Yep, and then it is a no gain. Fourth and five from the 25. And they're definitely going to go for it here. Weird. Quick screen pass completes. And I think they're going to get the first down. Well executed screen. Lyman moved out of the way uh, not in the, at the right time. Checked it down for a nice first down on about a seven yard gain. Yeah. It was a definite gamble, but it paid off, and it's going to be good for a first down. It's good for five, and it's first and ten. East Hampton at the Frontier 20. It's like a double wing set up behind Weir. Now they adjust. Motion goes Kelly, handoff goes inside. The thousand found again, and he gets wrapped up. Another stopped run on first down. They do well at stopping the first down runs, but then when you get to second and third down, they're not pursuing the right people. Matty Carlson with the tackle, and that's a loss of one. Second and 11 for East Hampton. They are knocking on the door. Can Frontier hold them off? Almost in the red zone. Absolutely. And they have been pretty deadly in the red zone today. Yep, I think they've scored a touchdown every time. Weir in the shotgun again. Weir rolling right. Firing downfield into the end zone. Touchdown! What a catch, what a pass. That was beautifully executed yet again as the Eagles strike again. A dot of a throw, nailing it right into that, right into the side of the end zone, catching it, barely getting inbounds. Good for 21, and again, that's David Helms, who has been a killer. That's his second touchdown catch of this game. And suddenly, just like that, East Hampton has the lead 34-30. Dangerous connection there. Over 80 yards receiving now this game. Going to go for a two-point conversion here, which put them up by one touchdown. Pass over the middle. Intercepted in the end zone and brought back out. But the key is no two-point conversion as the ball is picked off by Miles Freeman. It will come back up the field with 8.50 to go in the game. East Hampton has the lead. East Hampton 34. And Frontier 30, this is high school football. Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. So the pass intercepted, the PAT pass intercepted by Freeman in the end zone, but more importantly, we had a penalty at the end of that play. Looked like a chop block against East Hampton. So that's going to allow Frontier to kick the ball. Actually, no. Is it going to be assessed on the... They're kicking from the 40, so it must be going to be assessed. Ball 
Ball is kicked off and caught at the 20. Bring back up in the middle and to about the 40 yard line. Good for about a 20 yard return, which is where Frontier will start it off at around their own 40. I did not see who committed that foul, but it was clearly a block below the belt, below the waist. And so Frontier takes over on their 40 as the wind picks up yet again. So a lot of time on the clock and Miles Freeman to bring his guys up and try and take this lead back. This has been a wild one. Inside give, good for about five or six yards up to about the 46 yard line. Power football showing again here. I can't really throw it through the air that much considering how strong the wind is. Well, and running is their game. That's good for six by Worley. It brings up second and four from the 46. The other advantage, too, to running the ball, uh, Emilio, is that it takes a lot of time off the clock. Yep. And that's one of the real advantages of just keeping the ball on the ground nice and steady, four, five, six yards of the clip. If they can, if they can stop them after this drive. That's true. Then uh, they'll have the ball back, and, well, if they score, they'll have the ball back in a great situation. Inside get to Worley doesn't go very far. It's going to bring up uh, third and about four. No gain on the play there for Stone. No gain on the play. It's a big third down conversion here. Yep, last time they went with a fake punt on fourth down because they couldn't get it on third. So they're going to do on third this time and hopefully try to, maybe try to change it up from last time. Inside give. Up the middle, he's close. Don't think it was a first down there. It's just. That was Landry on that one. No, that was actually Wordley again. And it's gonna be fourth and one. So that was good for three. Fourth and one at the 49 of Frontier. They gotta go for it here. I agree, I don't know if there's any choice. They gotta go for this. There's a lot of plays that they can that they know how to use that'll definitely get it. But we'll see if they pick one that'll work. Frontier's gonna take a timeout. Gonna talk it over. So 725 to go in the game. East Hampton with a 34 to 30 lead over Frontier. And defensively they've had a tough time. East Hampton has thrown a lot of things at them that they have not seen yet this year. Offensively, in the last couple of series, this, the running game has sputtered a bit. This has been a game for Frontier to adjust to. Haven't seen this in a while. Inside handoff. That's good to get for the first down anyway. First down here. Got one now. And the ball is, that's Gawanter with that run. And that will bring the ball to the 48 of East Hampton, so that's good for three. And that keeps the drive alive and keeps the clock in motion. Wind is wicked, picking up here. That goes to Landry, Landry bowls ahead and is close to first down yardage. I don't think they're really going to have a choice but to keep running it. If it's 4th and 14, they need to go for it. They're still going to have to run it. There's no chance through the air with this wind. That's going to bring up a 2nd and 3 from the 41. It's good for 7 by Worthy, who's got a lot of touches in this half. Six, 6.35 to go in regulation. It is 34-30 East Hampton. Frontier has the ball and they are starting to march. I don't know, Emilio. I don't think I would throw the, I would put the ball in the air at all. I think you're right. I think keep the ball on the ground, pound it. Yep, that's what they've been doing all the all game. They've been throwing it, throwing it here and there, and it's worked. But, but East Hampton clearly has made an adjustment on defense. They've been yeah. doing a much better job containing this run game. It's been more uh, longer. The short runs have been longer now but the long runs have not happened. That's true. Inside draw again. This is good for first down yardage. As those legs just keep on pumping, that's good for a first. That was great power there. Coming right up the middle. 
powering through about three or four people. Kept his feet moving, got the first down. Yep. And that's good for 11 for Gawanter. First down at about the 30 yard line of East Hampton. Oh, first down. Clock is in motion. Inside give again. This is going to be good for, again, about two or three, four yards maybe. That was a nice run defense there. They got what they, if they can do that four plays in a row, they'll get the first, but who knows if they're going to be able to do that three, three or four plays in a row. That's exactly right, but that's, that's, that's the game. These guys play. This is, this is textbook. East Hampton power football. Old school kind, just running up in there and, you know, if you're stranded, I mean, it's, it's not pretty. It. It's not as exciting as a 50-yard pass, but it's effective for this team. Now counter run the other way. Bouncing to the outside. He's got the corner. Down the sideline. Touchdown. Yeah, what? Landry. What a stiff arm. Stiff arm's the guy and uses the stiff arm as a bounce out to get around the edge and get it and get in for a long touchdown. About 35 yards. Actually, this good for a 27-yard touchdown run by Landry. And more importantly, it puts Frontier back on top, 36 to 34. Here they go on the two-point conversion. Yeah, this is a big two-point conversion attempt. This could make it should make it a four-point lead for the Hawks. Landry's been using these stick arms well all day, and here he goes using them very well to get a touchdown. Freeman rolls out, looking for someone to throw to. It gets sacked. That's a big stop by East Hampton, a huge stop. As the two-point conversion fails, we'll come back up the field with the score. Frontier 36, East Hampton 34. This is Frontier Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins, Emilio Dindana, Zach Pelk, and Alec Eckholt running the cameras tonight. Frontier Community Access Television coverage of the Red Hawks and the East Hampton Eagles. The Hawks have taken the lead back. 36 to 34 with 5.21 to go in the game. Frontier's got to make a stop here, I think. Yep, if they don't, East Hampton will get in the end zone, and that'll make it a 40 to 36 point game, possibly 42 to 36. Colin Blake kicks it off, and uh, East Hampton runs it back about six yards. Good stop there, and the Eagles will take over. It's really now or never for Frontier. If they don't stop them, they have a much higher chance of losing. But if they stop them, they get the ball back, they score a touchdown, they can take a solid lead. Ball will be spotted at the 31 of East Hampton. They've got 5.16 on the clock, and they're down by two. This has been a good one. We're under center. He's got double wide outs. And the handoff goes inside to Towson Froud, and he gets probably three or four. Looks like that was another option. That time they decided to hand it up the middle. Frontier saw it coming and stopped it. It's good for, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say three, so they're gonna second and seven from the 34 of East Hampton. Under five minutes to play. Inside give goes to Kelly, I believe. And he is close to first down yardage. Good run, but Frontier got him just short of the first. So see what they can do here on third down. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good Frontier spot. It's out at about the 40 yard line. No, oh, they're calling it a first down. Yeah, I, th I thought he got it. I, th I don't think there was much question that he got there, but it, it is. A first down at about the 42. It didn't look like there was much doubt to me, but I'm not wearing a striped shirt. Pitch goes to the right side, and that time they read it beautifully, the Frontier Ends did, and they bring down Perone after he gains maybe two. A nice stop by the end, disengaging and jumping on the back. He looked like a monkey on that play. <laughs> Second and eight from the 44, under four minutes to play, and this one's been a dandy. 
from East Hampton. Kelly in motion. Inside give, fake. And oh, Perone takes off. He got a little bit of daylight, which is all that kid needs. And that's a first down into Frontier Territory. Now that was not the much needed stop they need there. <laughs> it absolutely wasn't. Hey, I got about 30 yards to hold him off now. That's good for 23 by Perone. East Hampton is using the clock very well. They absolutely are. This is this is very, very well managed drive. Inside give goes to Towson Froud. He pulls up the middle, gets probably five or six yards. Another power run all day. It's good for five. Ball spotted at about the 28 of Frontier. Second and six from the 29 of the Red Hawks. Eagles have the ball, trailing by two. Kelly gets the inside handoff, around end, first down yardage, still on his feet. He's into the end zone, touchdown! That was a great run around the outside. Handed it off inside, broke it outside, down the sidelines the whole 30 yards. That was Cam Kelly, who is having himself quite a night. That is his third touchdown. Two rushing touchdowns and a 75-yard kickoff return. Well, no, it's now or never for Frontier after this two-point conversion. If they get the two-point conversion, it's going to be a very close game. It could be sent to overtime. Yeah, it definitely could. Well, this has been... The game of the year so far, I think, in the Intercounty League in terms of competitiveness. Weir is under center. Back and forth all day. Inside gets Towson for breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. Did he get in? No. No good. Now this game, it's, it's not likely for this game to be sent to overtime. Actually, it's probably impossible. We'll come back up the field as East Hampton gets on the board again with 2.36 to go in the game. It is East Hampton 40, Frontier 36. This is Frontier Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Well, Emilio, for your first uh, game as a high school football analyst, you, could, you can't quite get much more exciting than this. <laughs> no. And high scoring. I mean, this is... This is crazy, but we knew this was going to be a competitive game. There's two high, two high-powered programs doing a battle, and right now the East Hampton Eagles are two minutes thirty-six seconds away from getting the win here. It's going to shoot out all day, back and forth. No team can maintain the lead. East Hampton to kick it off, and that crazy bunched formation, and they boot it down to about the fifteen-yard line, where Freeman will pick it up at the fourteen. Freeman runs the right sideline and gets knocked out of bounds at around the 20. Good for about a six-yard return, which is where Frontier will take over. That was a nice kick, making him think he would, it would go out of bounds, so he waited to pick it up. Didn't go out of bounds, and he had nowhere to run. First and 10 from the 28 of Frontier. So they have, they have got to go 72 yards in 232. To hope to tie and possibly win with a point after. Quick time out on the field. We're going to take the break. As the wind has picked up a little bit here and it's starting to get a little bit chilly. You know, fall is definitely here. Late September. This is what it's all about. Yep. So I think I would expect Don Gordon. If I know Don Gordon, I would expect he's going to probably just pound this ball and take as much time off this clock as possible. Yeah, but if it, if it takes too much time off the clock and doesn't get far enough, it could end up in a bad situation, but it could also end up very good for them. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the thing that you got to worry if you're a Frontier Red Hawk fan is that East Hampton has done a pretty good job in the last couple of series not totally stopping the run, but defending the run pretty well, although Landry broke it uh, from 27 yards out for that last score. So, gut check time for your Frontier Red Hawks as they've got... Not a lot of time and a lot of field to go. Two minutes, 30 seconds. And they've got some timeouts. So they have to stop the clock they can. 
Big drive, big drive of the game here. Inside handoff, blasting up the middle into first down yardage. Worley, did the ball squirt loose? It's like he dropped the ball, but I, I thought he was down there. You see what the refs say. I thought he was down too. He's darn close to first down yardage. Yep, they're calling him down. To bring up second and about two. And this is the first down for Landry. Nice, simple, pounding it up like usual. Flag. Well, let's see what this is. What's the call? Was there a flag? <laughs> a legal substitution, I think, maybe? It's going to be a five yard penalty on Frontier. Actually, no, it's a 15 yarder. Well, that's not good for them. It's going to knock them back to the 25 yard line. The wind's died down a bit, but it's still there. That's a 10 yard penalty, actually. Which means the passing game could work, but still won't be as good as it would be with no wind. Ball is spotted back at the 25-yard line. On at first and 12 now. First and 12. <coughs> Less than two minutes to go in this game. That was the penalty that the Frontier Red Hawks did not need. Nope, that was horrible for them. They were running out the clock, and then they got set back like, like whatever they did. Didn't matter, and the clock was still down. Now it's a two-minute drill. Motion goes Landry, and he gets hit in the backfield and brought down. Great defensive play by Josh Brown of East Hampton. That's a big loss, the biggest loss of the game so far. So nice stuff. And for uh, Frontier, not what they needed. Second down really and 17. And hit in the backfield and dropped again as East Hampton's bringing the lumber on this drive. Well, now or never for them. It's like third and long. Guess they just got to go far, all right? Got no choices here. Definitely, Frontier wants to talk about it because they're about to die fast and quiet. 121 to go. In the game, the ball is spotted inside the 20 at about the 18. So that's a loss of two that brings up third and 19 from the 18. That pounding game is not working in two minute drill. East Hampton saw it coming and was sending the pressure. Well, give East Hampton credit. I mean, they, they're playing great defense in the second half, especially against the run. And, you know, yeah. that's, that's the first time that Frontier has really been shut down for, for consecutive losses. This season, I mean, they didn't do it at all against Drury, and they certainly haven't done it until the second half tonight. Losses of five and two. They've been uh, East Hampton. Is it ju they're adjusting throughout this whole game. Finally made the correct adjustments and stopped the offense. Stopped Frontier's offense. All right, so this is third and 19 from the 18-yard line of Frontier. With 121 to go in the game. Freeman rolls out, screen pass complete. And cutting up the left sideline, and down the left sideline, and brought down. That was wow. a huge play. 40, over 40 yards on the screen pass. Yep, that was pass to Landry complete. Dink and dunks and always end up big. That time it did, great blocking and a great run. That spots the ball to 43 of East Hampton. Clock's moving. Hurry up offense here. No huddle. Freeman. Inside give to Gawanter. Gawanter breaks a couple of tackles. Bulls his way ahead. Flag behind the play. Let's see who they get. Somehow they're, they're still pounding in here. Even though 49 seconds left in the game. They're just running it up the middle. Risky here, but could pay off big. We'll see. Ooh, face mask against East Hampton. 
Oh. Now that, I think they've just entered the red zone on that penalty. Yep. That's good for 15 and a first down. They spot the ball at about the 20, it looks like. Timeout is taken. We're going to keep it right here with 45.8 seconds. That is a very, very costly face mask penalty. Yep, regrouping, talking it over. Seeing if they can try to reconsider the game plan here for this drive. It's going very well in the beginning. Broke out that 40 plus yard screen and gone downhill since then. That screen pass from to uh, Aaron Landry was good for 30, uh, like the 39 yards. Then the face mask gave another 15. So it's first and 10 at the 20. Landry's been having a great game through the air and the ground. Yeah, he is, I mean, he's, he's always solid, but um, especially tonight, he's had a couple of big runs, a couple of big touchdown runs, and that may have been the biggest play of them all right there. That yeah. screener that he turned into a 39-yard a gain. Well, here they go. All right. Inside handoff goes to Gowanter. Gowanter powers up the right sideline. Still on his feet. Is he in? Touchdown! Touchdown! Oh, Seth Gowanter. From 20 yards out, broke two or three tackles, got the right sideline and got the pylon. Wow, Frontier leads 42-40. A great power run by Gawanter. Breaking off tackles, stiff arming, that's his, that's his style. Just pound it up, push, push, push. Hopefully he gets in there on that time he did when they needed to. Seth Gawanter, probably the biggest, biggest touchdown of the year so far to make it 42-40 from 20 yards out. Very clutch there. Down third and 20 at their own uh, 10. Inside handoff, did he get in? He did not, so the two point conversion run fails, but the Frontier Red Hawks have taken back the lead with 36.7 seconds left. And the Frontier Red Hawks lead 42 to 40. So now, you talk about gut check time for your defense. This is where the D's got to win this one. They did it when they needed on offense. Down third and 20 at their own 10. Now they need to do need to do when they need it. Well, I dare say that the offense hasn't really defense. been the question in this game tonight. For either team, it's been the defense of Frontier that's been having a tougher time against a very varied offense for East Hampton. Yeah, East Hampton's been pounding it on them all day, going through the air, couldn't stop them at all. It's now or never for them on defense. This is a critical, critical uh, special teams play for Frontier. They have got to stop and prevent a long run back. Squib, eh, no, not a squib. Taking it about the 15, up the right side. Swarmed and brought down at about the, I want to say the, maybe the 35 yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Well, now and ever for both teams. If this East Hampton offense can get it, it'll be great for them. And it's really now or never for them. And it's now or never for this defense after making a great drive. Ball spotted at the 35 of East Hampton. 30 seconds even left in this game. 42-40, Frontier has the lead. East Hampton has the pigskin. It all comes down to this. Weir in the shotgun. Has three receivers to the right side. He rolls back. Fires down the left sideline. Incomplete. Dropped it. He caught it and bounced it out of his hands. That would have been a big play and sent them up in great field position. Yeah, he would like to have that one back, I think. I think he might have been taking a look downfield before he had the ball in his hands. And that's something you don't want to do. A little adrenaline there, but that's an incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 24.2 seconds left. Second and 10 from the 35 of East Hampton. Yeah, you got to catch the ball before you run with it. You can't do anything <coughs> if you don't hang on. That's absolutely right. 
Although credit Frontier, pretty good coverage on that. Yeah. We're sending them all again in the shotgun in motion. One receiver inside give goes the other way to Towson Frout. Towson Frout up the middle. He gets about five yards. And that stops the clock and the timeout with 17.2 seconds left. No timeouts left, I think. I think you're right. Well, that's the last one I think they've got. It's good for five. 17 seconds, around 58 yards. Third down upcoming at the 40 yard line of East Hampton. Well, can't say no one got their money's worth today. This <laughs> has been one of the great games. Yep, shootout, back and forth. Nobody can maintain anything. And last week, Turner's Falls wins to Woodstock, Connecticut, and ended up winning 44-40. It's kind of like that feeling right now. It's been back and forth, all kinds of lead changes, all kinds of great plays on both sides of the ball. Mm. Too bad someone's got to lose this game, but that's the way the game is played. Yep. Every game, there's got to be a winner. Red Hawks out there talking to each other, saying, come on now, we're 17 seconds away from pay dirt. No matter who wins this, it's going to be a great fought match. But it's now or never for both teams. Weir under center. Takes the snap. Over the middle pass, incomplete. Goes through the hands of the receiver, stopping the clock with 13.8 seconds left. That, that, that would have... That would have been better for Frontier if he caught it, because then he would have gotten down and the clock would have run out. Correct. So fourth and five, this is the ball game right here. As they are definitely going to go for it with 13.8 seconds left. <laughs> By the way, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Your birthday's tomorrow. You've got quite a career ahead of yourself if you choose in broadcasting, Amelia. Thank you. Trips to the right. We are under center in the shotgun. We are rolls out. Fires across the side. And it's intercepted. Intercepted. And that's going to do it. Frontier is going to win this game. You saw that one coming. Intercepted it. And now they have the ball. Kneeing it out to win the game. Absolutely, a hard fought win ending with an interception by the Frontier Red Hawks as East Hampton gave them everything they could, worthily with the interception. And you're absolutely right, Emilio. One knee and this one is going to be over. Either team could have won that game. Although there's an injured player on the field as the Frontier team on their knee, and I'm not sure who got hurt. It might be an East Hampton player. We'll see who it is, and hopefully they're all right. But that was a very exciting Way to end that game. I think I can see Maroon Jersey there. Looks like an East Hampton player. It's definitely an East Hampton player who's down on the other side of the field. But all the credit in the world to the Frontier Red Hawks for hanging in there and playing some pretty solid late session defense. Yeah, that, uh, that screen pass was the key play. It really was. And, uh, you know, you, you can't say enough of that. I mean, this is the kind of, kind of a win that definitely a team will look back on later on. Front, you know, there's a lot of a lot of big expectations for this Frontier Red Hawk team this year. That a lot of people feel like they're they're going to go to the playoffs. And this is one of those games that you look back on as turning points. And I think defensively they might have some work to do, but uh, can't say anything about the offense. I mean, solid performance again. Steven Worley with the interception. And now it'll be just a question of a Miles Freeman knee. And that'll do it. Don't fumble. <laughs> yeah, well, that's absolutely right. Touchdowns by Aaron Landry, Miles Freeman, Aaron Landry again, Seth Gawaner. Landry and Gawaner. So it's been pretty much a ground based attack, and it's going to be another frontier win as they move to 2 0 on the young season, and that will do it. Well fought game by both teams. Strong game. And yeah, worth everyone's time. Final score from Whitebrook Middle School in East Hampton. The Frontier Red Hawks, 42. And the East Hampton Eagles, 40. For my broadcast partner, Emilio Didonna. Happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you. For our camera people, Zach Kelk and Alec Eckold. And for our executive producer, Kevin Murphy, I'm Chris Collins. 
Thanks for watching Frontier Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.